The big question is what happens in 2023? Do we see a plateauing of, of paper prices and more availability? You are now at uh, Novus Holdings Limited in Cape Town, South Africa. And we have three different divisions in our company. We've got print, packaging and tissue. And at the moment we are standing in major site in our print division in Cape Town, South Africa. The market has been very interesting over the last few years. First we had the pandemic, which saw us lose quite a bit of volume in that process, as I think happens to everyone throughout the world. And then as we came out of the pandemic, uh, we hit the, the global paper crisis. So that caused some other issues in our, in our business. And then we have uh, some electricity supply constraints. But very interesting to see is our book market has come back very nicely. Uh, our retail and commercial businesses come back very nicely. We have seen a dip in the magazine market. We've seen a bit of a dip in the newspaper market. But we also have a very strong educational sector in our business uh, where we supply the Department of Education in South Africa. So that is a very nice core and stable contract in our business. This business has been running for over a hundred years um, and as it's developed into the group the size it is now we rely heavily on technology. So A we've got incredibly skilled people in our operations. Our planning team equally good and of course because where we're situated uh, in Cape Town and in the bottom of Africa our, our raw material inputs have to be planned incredibly well. Paper can take anything between four to five months to land in Cape Town from date of order. So you can imagine that logistic cycle has to be managed very carefully. So a lot of automation, but also a lot of skill and IP in the business from our people. So look, very market driven. As I said, I'm sure in the footage will show uh, our Gravier pre-press facility where that, that I think is a very good example, uh, I'll give you two examples, of where we had uh, aging kit and slow turnaround times. And by investing in, in the newer age equipment, we were able to do double the volume at half the time. So that was a significant game changer in our business. The other change that we've made in the last five or six years is installing the digital web, the, the Kodak Prosper 6000. And there again, speed to market, quick turnaround time, really has fitted into our book business very nicely and we believe given us a, an edge on the market. You know, in such a diverse business, you can't invest in everything as and when you feel like it. You've got to be very carefully thought of. And obviously a listed company, there are certain procedures we need to go through before our shareholders will, will fund, uh, fund our, our capex. In the country, in South Africa, we have a single power supplier and that is that's a state-owned enterprise called ESCOM. There has been not the best level of maintenance in the power plants over the years, so we get what we uh, call in this country is load shedding. And that has various different stages and that can be between maybe two hours and ten hours a day. That places a material uh, stress on the production process. A number of years ago we uh, invested in generation power, diesel generation, and on site in this particular plant we have seven and a half thousand kilowatt hours of diesel generation, which is massive. It's enough to power five thousand homes, but that's the, that's the level of, of power generation we need. We've even moved further now into putting solar into our business which is uh, going to reduce our load requirements by as much as 10%. And then on the uh, steam side, we had electric and paraffin steam generation, 
and we, a number of years ago, also made the investment uh, in a biomass boiler. And that steam, we run all our Gravier presses, including our packaging Gravier press. You know, we've, we've learned a lot about that Prosper over the last couple of years. Uh, it has been ordered in 2014, commissioned 2016. It took us a year or two to get our heads around it, must be quite honest. But we have a phenomenal team of production and minders uh, in that plant. Finding the sweet spot in terms of the optimal run is really what took us the time. So which real width to run, the imposition, speed has been an interesting an interesting mix. So typically in our cut sheet business we run from book of one maybe to 500. We would then switch over to our Kodak Prosper 500 and up we would maybe try and batch three or four if it's only 500 and get it up to the 1500 ideally 2000 level. We'd then push that up to sort of the 6000 run on the Prosper maybe more depending on on whether it's mono color and the imposition and then we switch over to our uh, Kamori sheet fed presses, either 6, 8 or 10 colour. And from there we jump to web. The current Kodak, uh, the DPI is about 600, 600. So it's very nice for trade publishing work and it's very nice for education work. So you're not at the moment Exactly to your point, we're then going to put the, the higher quality work on the sheet fed presses and run what we can through that Prosper. We chose to put the Man Roland on the front of it, so we do lose a bit of speed, but we, we believe we make up more than that in terms of time because of the book block that comes off uh, in the process. We believe South Africa is the centre of the earth. I mean, look at the weather and the, the beautiful beaches and the wine farms we have here. But to answer your question, um, we have regular contact with Kodak. So if we're unable to get engineers out here, which we haven't for many years, they are always available online, on a Teams, you know, full Walsh is based locally here in Cape Town. So access to the Kodak team is always good. And I would battle to think of a, an area where we've had a problem. We're permanently modeling our capacity. Uh, we're talking to our customers. We are in certain channels seeing runs drop, which would then push it more into the digital space. For now, I think we're very happy with our footprint. We'll see what happens in the next 12 to 18 months. And if there's a change in the market, uh, we like to think we are fairly agile. But as you've seen in our plants, we have the, the full spectrum of book of few right up to millions of copies of Gravier. So for now, I think we're very well poised to manage the market and we've just got to keep a very close eye on which channels are growing, which are maturing and which are potentially declining. We are a listed company, so our, our financials are a matter of public record. Our CEO has stated publicly that this current year we are going to see some margin squeeze largely on the back of what went on in the world of paper last year. Uh, but yes, we are a profitable business. This year, I think we are going to see margin compression uh, on the back of paper and other input costs, inks, etc., have some quite sizable increases. The big question is, what happens in 2023? Do we see a plateauing of paper prices and more availability? That seems to be the general consensus, but how it plays out, we will see.